All right, YouTube, today we're going to play some Bricks of Shadow. This is uh, Dylan Donegan's 75, so we're going to run this through the league. All right, YouTube, today we're going to play go. some Bricks of Shadow. This is uh, Dylan Donegan's 75. They to play this. So this is my league I ran with today. It did not go super well. Just kind of all close matches, just kind of. How's that? That should that looks like I mean I cut off one of the uh, one of the audio here, so let's see how that works. The sand's fine though. I really wish that. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna keep my hand. That's nice. The sand's actually not too bad on the draw because I get to understand. No, oh, okay. Now we're in trouble. Yeah, we're playing against Tron. Okay. It's better. How are you, Archmage? You playing in the uh, in regionals this week? Okay, so that's not bad. I'm actually going to hold my Street Wraith until next turn after I see her in Visions. GP didn't go too well. No, um, we made we made my deck too strong. For geez, that's rough. It's in Syracuse, right? I mean, you're up in New York. I thought it was in Syracuse. I don't know what's going on with Moto tonight. Okay. All right, so we actually kind of can, we can kind of pin him here. So let's take this Sylvan Scrying. This is a very beatable hand from our opponent if we can find a way to get a threat going here. New York's too big for the map of America. What we don't want to see here is like, okay, this Carpusin Forest is nice. All right. So I think I'm going to fetch a Steam Vents. No, I'm going to fetch a... Is there a chance I want to do two blue spells? I could fetch red for this Cake Man, because I'm going to need Cake Man to deal with this Oblivion Stone. I think I'm going to fetch a Blood Crypt. And then Serum Visions. It's in Catskill. I don't really think I want either of these. We drew a little land, which kind of sucks. I could put Seer Visions on the top, but I'm not doing anything next turn. Hey again, Scubbits. I don't know if Scut, Scut, I don't know, Jen. It's, it's hard to pronounce all the Twitch names there, but I hope you're doing all right. I think I'm gonna put this on the bottom. I think I'm gonna cycle this Street Wraith here. Look for a play this turn. Nope, no play. Nothing for my opponent. That is good for the home team. But now I need to find something to do here. So I'm going to fetch out probably blue-black. Thought scour myself. All right, we're getting nasty. All right, I want to get rid of this. I want to get rid of all my lands. 
I want this Thought Seeds to deal with one of these cards here. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this Inquisition. So I'm probably next turn, I'm probably going like Snap Thought Seeds, Hold Up Thought Scour, unless my opponent plays Oblivion Stone off of a Tron land. Nope, they just scoop it up. And I'll get lucky there. <clears throat> okay. So against Tron, I assume I want this command. I want the rejections. I want the stuff and the stubs here. Cards I don't want. Fatal push is garbage. Dismember is garbage. And lightning bolt in some numbers probably isn't that great. My opponent's gonna bring in some graveyard hate, no doubt. So I probably can get rid of shaving on a Snapcaster Mage, keeping a lightning bolt in order to fight through Karn or Thrag Tusk. I don't think I need all four of my Snapcaster Mages. Because they're going to bring in probably, they're probably going to have four Relics in their 75. I don't really see anything else I super want. Like Young Pyromancer is a threat, but I don't think it's that great against this deck. I could see Shaving an Angler, maybe keeping another Bolt in. Because they're going to have Graveyard Hate. But I think for now we're just going to run this back here. I think it's important to like do a lot of hedging when you sideboard with this deck. Because this deck is like so reliant on the Graveyard. That if you don't leave yourself an option after sideboarding, you're just going to get... You're just going to get in a lot of trouble. It's reliant on the Graveyard in a way that's... Can be frustrating because like <clears throat> and sometimes you can just you know with other decks you can still play your cards you can't play your delve cards which is annoying yeah this is a good hand we're actually going to cycle these street rates on turn one because i don't really want to get i want to get a red source so that i can bolt myself to potentially turn this death shadow on faster but i also need a blue source tormod's crypt see there's the there's a graveyard hate. Another Tormod's Crypt, holy shit. So my opponent kind of just mulligan to five. I don't think this is good enough graveyard hate to bring in. All right, we, we want more fetch lands. We need ways to deal damage to ourselves. Okay, so that's good. So let's fetch a watery grave. I'm actually gonna hold Hey, Paulo, how are you? I don't really know if there's any reason to hold this Street Wraith because the only reason I'd want to hold this Street Wraith is if I draw a Serum Visions next turn and I'm not going to cycle into a Death Shadow next turn. If I go Serum Visions, I'm not cycling into anything that's not Death Shadow. So I might as well get more information. So my man is going to be Serum Visions plus Death Shadow or Discard Spell plus Death Shadow, not Serum Visions plus what I cycle into. This is going to be a pretty explosive hand here. Okay, so there's a Serum Visions. So the, the thing that we thought could happen <clears throat> looks like it is going to happen here. Okay. Drown your Temple. Oh, this is, so this is like a really odd kind of Tron here. They're going to have... They're gonna have Tron on three, but they don't have a payoff. <coughs> <coughs> they probably should have, should pop this before I get priority on my main phase. I think I'm just gonna fire this off because if I hit something it's like potentially game breaking here. So, you know, I think I would rather do that than Serum Visions. Because the only thing that I'm looking for is like a Teamer Battle Rage, and this also deals me damage. At this point, I just want, I guess I could have Serum Visions for a Stubborn Denial. 
Like, all I want is counter spells. I'm not really sure what the Drowning Out Temple does. <clears throat> like, you're not... Unless they're playing some way that you can discard this. We hit an Agent Stirrings, which isn't nothing. Maybe they're playing... But they're playing the black version, so it's not even like they can ditch this to Collective Brutality to get any value out of it. So if I draw a Battle Rage next turn, I'm going to kill him. Well, no, I need Battle Rage plus Red Source, so I can't kill him next turn. I've got to hope my opponent... I hope my opponent doesn't, like, top deck me out of this. Alright, well, I'm glad I hit the Ancient Stirrings at least. <coughs> Okay, so as long as this doesn't hit like O Stone, if this hits a payoff, I can snap Thoughtseize on my turn. Okay, so it's a Worm Conjure. So I'm gonna have to snap. Oh, he can actually just get it with this Crypt. This is actually gonna get kind of difficult. So the Snapcaster play is not going to work. So what am I doing with this Worm Coil Engine? Go to five, play Serum Visions, find something, maybe bolt my opponent. Not attack. Yeah, I think I have to go. Let's go get a Steam Vent. <clears throat> and I'll use that uh, cantrip here. I think Battle Rage will win me the game next turn. If I find Battle Rage in any of this card or the top card, then I'm in pretty good shape. Okay, so they fired that off. Oh, there's a rejection. I don't think I want either of these cards. The rejection is just like a turn late and it's like not dealing with the engine. But I saved it. A street Wraith, I might have been able to get into that, but I guess I'm losing some clock. Don't be a Karn. Okay. So I don't know any cards that they have left. So... I guess I bolt my opponent because then on next turn they go to eight, they go to nine. I need to do one damage to myself because then I'm going to flash Snapcaster and block this and then bolt my Snapcaster before damage. Hmm. Oh, I put this card on top. Yeah. I thought I put it on the bottom. So we're gonna do that play that I mentioned, block this, and then bolt my Snapcaster before damage. <coughs> and then try to find something next turn. I thought I clicked on this dude on the bottom, but I just must have misclicked there while I was trying to think. Hmm. 
nothing. So I just snap bolt my opponent? I don't think so. Okay. I have to tap out in order to play Angler. Yeah, I don't. I think I'm just. Yeah, I think I'm just chilling out here. I could Snapcaster for Serum Visions, but then I have to block this with a Snapcaster. They gain a bunch of life. But if I find Teamer Battle Rage, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think I'm gonna Snapcaster Mage for Serum Visions. We drew a stub too, that's sick. Put on the bottom, put on top. So if my opponent stays on defense next turn, I deal 16, 10 to them, they die. Just from this Death Shadow, 16 minus 6 is 10. And then this gets him for 2, so it's 18. I think we're in good shape here. I mean, we had two, that was a pretty sick draw. And then it was another sick uh, top on there. The very good Serum Visions. Well, that's why you play it. This is a Thrag test that's going to make things a little harder. Okay, we're just gonna counter this. Oh, it's this. This is the interaction for the Drown Yard Temple. You sack the worm. Quote, you sack the Drown Yard Temple. That still seems kind of small ball. I hate how Moto is tweaking out for me right now. You can't see some of the pictures. So let's do the math. They block here. I first strike 6, 16, 10. Yeah, we're in good shape. I'm not done right. 16 minus 6. Yeah. We have a stubborn denial in case there's anything <clears throat> real shenanigans like from my opponent. All right, it's a good way to start the night. I never like playing against Tron when it comes to playing these Death Shadow decks. I I always think that this is kind of a tough matchup for the home team. I wonder what my opponent cut for the Drown Yard Temples. Uh, let me go get. Let me go get some water and I'll be right back. Yeah, good way to start. <sighs> All right, one the die roll. I will play first. And I think I've got a mulligan this hand. There's just not enough going on. If I brick all my serum visions, then it's just no good. Yeah, we'll keep this hand. 
think I'm gonna put this on the bottom because I have like a counter spell and a removal spell already. I'd like things that do damage, that like do damage to myself or like a discard spell or a cantrip. And I could bolt myself, but. I guess I could have left it on top and then scryed it away. I should have left it on top. <clears throat> yeah, see, now I want it. Yeah, that was that was a mistake on my part. I could have just left it on top. That was stupid. It's not often you get a stub of cranial plating. But sometimes you just get the stub of cranial plating. All right, it's not bad. Fetch land. Okay. Yeah, I should have left that lightning bolt on top and then used my scry if I needed to. It would have been the right thing to do, even though I'm just going to counter the cranial plating anyways. So it didn't end up making a difference, an impact on this game. But it was still the right thing to do. That's going to be tough to beat. I don't think I fatal push this. Okay, it doesn't matter. We're going to get a blood, we're going to get a blood crypt. And now we're just basically digging to team or battle rage. So that's the only way we're going to beat these edge, this edge champion. Unless my opponent gets like a little overzealous with an attack or something like that. Then we just catch him with enough removal to kind of overwhelm the this board. Because I doubt, I doubt they'll attack with this. They can't block at least both of these, especially right now. So I made one mistake tonight. How's the, the night of the chat's night going? Did everybody have a good Memorial Day? Signal test, okay. So that's worth a fatal push. The cranial plating and strap would not be good. So what Thoughtseize does is actually give me an attack here, which is nice. So let's go see what this last card is. And that's okay because I get to get in here at least and put a little bit of pressure on. So I can't block anything anyways. If my opponent tries to fire up this Blink Moth Nexus, then I'll just kill it before blocks. Probably gonna get three damage in here. And if I don't, my opponent's chumping away some of their board, which is, if you can get affinity to chump, it's pretty good. I think, because my opponent can hit me for three, four, five, which is half my life total if they swing out. So I might just push this signal pest and then just try to like beat with my two shadows. The me most mediocre of beats. I hope to draw, continue to just draw things that I can do with my mana so that I'm not just sitting here on like push or snapcaster mage. Okay. There's the spire. Cranial plating would be really bad. So I don't know if I like so I don't know if I'm supposed to kill this or not. Because if I just let them swing out here, then I'm on a 
and I go to five, which is three attacks from this. But I don't know if I'm able to cobble together enough removal in order to I think I'm just going to get rid of this. Especially if they go the poison way, this is going to give me more time. Yep. I think it's the right play for my opponent to just attack with this. Spring the drum. Okay. It's a pretty good draw. So now I have to think, should I go Snapcaster Mage for a Serum Visions? My opponent draws a Cranial Plating. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Play and Strap, and then I'm wicked dead if they draw a Cranial Plating. So I probably have to hold up like Snapcaster Stubborn Denial. So you just can't beat a Cranial Plating. So... And at this pace, I can sit here and just trade with my opponent. Or not trade, I guess trade combat steps with my opponent. Not actual trade, even though the Snapcaster will trade when I need it to. I really hate, like I don't understand, I restarted Moto like twice, yeah. Yeah, we rewarded for, for our thought process. Now, I think, I mean, we're not in like super shape. It's, it's all my opponent has to do is hit another cranial plating and we're in trouble. Hopefully just rip a battle rage. My opponent battle rages, they, this does eight. They have to chump here, chump here. And then I would get in, put them to two. If I drew like Street Wraith in the Battle Rage, that would be sweet. All right, my opponents. We're gonna turn it up. They that's dangerous. Means they have to block a death shadow. It's a good draw. I think that's actually lethal, because unless they have to block both if they don't block both death shadows, that's lethal. So I just bolt myself. Which it appears that's what they're going to do. Yep. I didn't just mess that up, right? Yeah, because they like, even if I bolt one, they block this, they take nine. 
and I don't have the bolt to bolt myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just want to make sure I wasn't like losing my mind there. I need, this only puts me five, so Gal Blast isn't lethal. So we just let this go. I'm going to Inquisition my opponent before I attack next turn. Okay, I guess it's just a Steel Overseer. So if I bolt this Overseer, my opponent hits this and then goes to one. I'm just gonna I'm gonna untap. Well, I have to get this out of the way no matter what. So I might as well free my mana up next turn in case I draw like a Snapcaster Mage. Cause he's gonna block both. Yeah. We're draw a fatal push move, we said. Gurmag Angler. Angler is okay. I'm going to play the Angler because if my opponent draws one, two, if they draw another creature, they can chump out for a turn. If I don't. It doesn't, like, we can't beat, playing it doesn't, we can't beat anything else. My opponent's not going to respect, my opponent can't afford to respect any cards in my hand, so they're just going to go for it no matter what I do. So, might as well make the play that lets me beat the most things. Okay, nice. So, we have a good sideboard plan for this deck. <clears throat> I want Engineer Explosives, Kologon's Command, Anger the Gods, Lava Man, Last Hope, and maybe these Rejections. I want to cut my Street Wraiths. Yep, yeah, another, another GG. I want to cut my Rejections. I think I, I think I want to cut Stubborn Denial, even though it was very good there. I think it's kind of medium, and having a card like Ceremonious Rejection is probably better if I want to play with Counter Spells, which I'm not even sure that I do. I'm not sure that I just don't want to be just mono removal. I thought it's kind of graveyard hate, so I'm going to shave on an Angler. Probably can cut a couple of these, which makes room for these. Let's see what this looks like. It'll just be like mono removal. Yep, thought sees is medium. I agree. We got one in the deck. We have three discard spells. I kind of think I want a fourth one. While I'm on the draw, so I because I, I want one in my hand, so I think I'm gonna bring one in and cut one more angler. Beating face with angler is I don't think that that's how we're gonna win this. I think we're gonna win this by just like controlling the board, 
and then Death Shadow Battle Rage most of the time, or Death Shadow is my threat. This angler just gets like brick walled so easily. I might board one more angler in while I'm on the play, but I think on the draw I just want enough answers to kind of an explosive start. We have a mulligan this hand. Like, it, we basically have four three drops, kind of. And even though, like, this is good here on the draw, I need to hit lands, and I don't even have cantrips. If this was a blue land, I, would, I think I'd keep this hand, but I think we gotta ship this one. Yeah, we'll keep this. We'll put anger on top. So my first land's actually gonna be a steam vent, which is weird I guess I could have just gone off island Oceans just automatically came up large <clears throat> so one two Three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna put this lightning bolt on the bottom of my library because I'd rather have it in my library and I'm just gonna mill over it. And we're just gonna go for the turn two angler next turn. Which should just put a little bit of pressure on my opponent. Unless they just mock what are we getting here? Steel overs here, okay. Ooh. This is a very odd card for Affinity decks to sideboard in against Fair decks, I think. I just don't think this is what you want to be doing in the matchup. And, like, yes, it lines up to hit my nice sideboard card, but I can just, like, play Angler, and, like, that gets ahead of what you what, what they're doing. I'd much rather see something like... Like, just... Like a, even, like a, like, a Karn or something like that. Something that's actually proactive. I hate... <coughs> like... I hate when decks. I think this is just misassigning your role here. Okay, they took my dismember. I wonder if they took my dismember. Yeah, I think it's still gotta be right here to just set this angler up. Worst comes the worst, my opponent plays a couple creatures into this Anger of the Gods. Which just doesn't seem doesn't seem like a win, winning strategy. Unless they have another Thought Season. If my opponent's got another Thought Season, like you got me. Lava Man's really good. One, two, three, four, five. I'll leave this Colagon's command in my in my graveyard, it looks like we're gonna be able to get to that eventually. Still losing this deck with being fair. Yeah, it's it's a fair deck. You're just a good stuff deck. It just plays on a different axis 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 than the other decks. Jesus. All right, this game's gonna get tough. At least we have the island, which is pretty good. I'm not gonna show my opponent the island. Well, Blood Moon's a card like they need it here. So I just anger the gods this thing? I'm going to attack no matter what. I kind of just want to anger the gods because then I can't really, like... Play any of these cards. I could have played around that. I could have. Well, I couldn't play around it and cast my Anger of the Gods.
I think I'm just gonna anger this thing. Because it allows me to like be more free with these cards here. And my opponent doesn't have Galvanic Blast up, so they can't blast my Gurmag Angler after I get rid of their um whatever it is. Get rid of their lava man. Yeah, that's that's what we were worried about. This is poor sequencing. I probably could have gotten an attack in here. I'm gonna do it anyways, but like I probably could have like my opponent thought it is I guess like the only card that I would play would be I would I need two removal spells. So that's just a stupid attack. Cause now I can get Gal blasted. Okay. Okay. So now I just flash this Snapcaster Mage in, and I think I'm dead. Because even if I shoot this, I can't. Um, if I shoot this and draw Teamer Battle Rage, it's only 12. My opponent's at one more life. Yeah. <clears throat> so got Mooned. All right, so on the play, I think I'm going to cut. I'm gonna bring in one more angler and cut a thought seize. Well, now that I know they have Blood Moon, I kind of want a little more discard. I think I'm gonna just keep it as is. Now that I see they have Moon, alternatively I can just respect Blood Moon and go like this, then play around it, which kind of takes away from my Death Shadows a little bit. Yeah, I think we're gonna do this. If I'm that worried about it, I can bring in a Stubborn Denial. Go something like this. Oh, this might just be like ludicrous. Tabernacle is just worse than Thoughtseize, though. So I think I'm just going to take the Thoughtseize. Because I do still want to be able to play my game, play the Death Shadow game. And if I am playing around Blood Moon, it's going to be a little harder for me to do that. All right, we'll keep this hand. We have a Death Shadow, we have a Serum Visions, a couple Snapcaster Mages. So if I find any sort of removal, this hand's very good. We can at least get a Swamp. Okay. Put this on top, put the bolt underneath it. Let's stack that poorly. This is a tilt. I think I would have rather because my opponent had got like played a creature there and then had an etch champion. Another spring leaf drum. This is an odd draw. I think next turn I'm gonna not play around, stop playing around Blood Moon to get this Death Shadow into play.
I think I, that's where it's letting resolve so that I can bolt. I can bolt it. Oh. I think the best, my best play, I think, is to get this in play and hold up rejection with fetching a swamp. I could get, oh no, I can't, nothing can happen to me here because I don't have any mana. What we're worried about here is a, um, like obviously we're worried about Blood Moon. We're not really beating that. We're worried about Edge Champion. Welding Jar's okay. Ether Grid would be pretty annoying. I don't know if they're supposed to bring that in this matchup or not. I think we just let that one in. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. That's why I didn't play around this. That was stupid. Oh, that's frustrating. That was very dumb. All right, well, now we're at least Blood Moon proof, which is nice. So let's get this going here. I'm going to play this island. Oh, I tapped. Oh my gosh, I'm all over the place. How do I fix this? I'm just gonna bolt this. Trade with the welding jar. I'm frustrated with myself. I made I've made a mistake afterwards, which is annoying. They trade. We still have the snapcaster. They get a regeneration shield. We basically are now priced into probably countering whatever they do here. Yeah, I should have countered it. I didn't think about Gal Blast. It's probably, it could cost me this game. Like the last hope to my nut card here. No, I definitely should have countered it. What do you mean it's a two for one? All right, we're gonna count this card. That's actually not a bad draw. It just lets me get that shadow into play. Now this Snapcaster Mage is probably just gonna be a rejection written all over it. So I'm probably not gonna win this game. I don't think I should. Because I just I made like a super mistake. One of the ways I do win is if my opponent just fires fires up these ink moths and tries pumping them. Cause it is only four then six, which would leave me at ten. Do me ten damage, put me at one over two turns. But probably one of the better ways to lose to Affinity is to let a Steel Overseer sit and play. Mm. Looks like my opponent's kind of in a tough spot. I hope they're just sitting on like a million blood moons.
that's worth getting rid of. I'll let's then like cast an edge champion also if I do this. Even though edge champion, even next turn, would like get me pretty good. Yeah, I have one more fetchable watery grave. As long as I haven't I haven't milled it or exiled it. I think I'm gonna attack with my Death Shadow this turn as well. I'm pretty sure I'm okay if my opponent wants to trade this Steel Overseer for it. Well, now we're just gonna now we're just gonna get rid of this and crack in for six. Okay. I guess I could have. This was another mistake by me. God, I'm not playing very well. Because I could have just attacked and then pushed the Steel Overseer with the Blink Moth activation on the stack. Just all over the place tonight already. There's the edge champion. Yeah. Go brick wall. That anger of the gods does nothing. All right, we're just gonna pass. What an odd game. The game I don't deserve to win because we we made we made a couple mistakes here. It's been a little while since I've jumped back into Death Shadow. I took a little break after the beginning of the month. I got a little frustrated with just the format in general. What do I need? I need like a Snapcaster. Snapcaster's Tear Envisions would be good. It'd be nice if I had my last open play if I hadn't pissed that away. I can't convince myself to play Wisp of Shadow over Jeskai. Jeskai seems pretty good. Um, I think blue white control is, is like, I don't know. Wow, this is, what are we doing here? Is this real life? Are we, are we chip shotting the shadow player? So my opponent's hand's just gonna be rolled up with Gal Blasts, I think. Well, now we're gonna find out. I think they've got God Blasts or like, just garbage. Thoughtseize, Stubborn Denial, Blood Moon. We just take the Stubborn Denial. If they want to thought seize me, then that's fine. If they want to do that, that's fine. So now we're just attacking. I like you, Dub. I don't like any deck that can't be proactive in modern. And like, like Jess guys, if my opponent wants to trade here, I think I'm all right with that. I'll get in six damage. If they just chump here, then I'll get in four damage. Um, or just brick wall my death shadow. Um. I just don't like any deck that in modern that can't be proactive. Like, if your deck's not it can't be proactive at some point, I just don't think it's very good. But like the fair decks seem to be doing well, you know. Like the Jeskai, Jun, Mardu Pyromancer have, have done well the last couple, um, last couple SCG events. So my interpretation of the format might be off. But Teferi seems like it's a big game in that deck. This is such an odd game. An odd game that I don't know, just do not deserve to win. So they drew Aspire Industries. They can't really play their Blood Moon because it really... Um, because this really, like, throws them for a loop. Though they can attack... They can't even attack with both of these. 
three turn clock. This is four. They're trying to attack me for three in the air. Okay, they're actually winning this race if I don't find something to add to the board. That doesn't make any difference because um, they have to block this anyways. God, if I had like an artifact kill spell, that would be sweet. If I had like a Kologon's command. And we go to one on their attack. So. Yeah, if I were my opponent, I would just fire up. And then I need to find Snapcaster Mage, Fatal Push, Lightning Bolt, Battle Rage. The Cantrip would be all right. And again, if we lose this matchup, then it's, it's all right. I think you kind of can do that there, Owl Mug. I think you can do that as long as your deck is proactive. What is this? So we drew a stuff. We drew a. This doesn't make any sense. No, that doesn't make any sense. I guess. Okay. That just kills us. They just chunk my shadow. And then they just attack with everything. Whoa. Alright, I'm gonna just anger the gods after combat here. Just to see what goes on here. Hopefully my opponent just tweaks out and activates their Blink Bomb Nexus. Nope, they got it. A little frustrating draw there. I mean, it was my fault. If I'd have had that Liliana last open play for the rest of the, for the entire game, I would have been able to figure out how to win that matchup, that match there. But that was my fault there. Like I should have just counterspelled the Archon Ravager so that my Liliana didn't get killed. Or if I would have attacked and then waited for my opponent to animate the land then I would have been able to kill it and then the would have only been a one power ink moth, ink moth instead of a two power one which would have just slowed the clock down I hope everybody's having a good night I hope you all are Uh, I would like to play first. Okay, it's pretty good. I wish I had a discard spell, but this is a potential. This is a pretty explosive. This is a nice little angle that Dismember gives the deck. Because this is like a turn two Death Shadow with a Stubborn Denial up. It's not fully turned on, but. Yeah, I don't even think that it's that. Like. If you're playing like if you're playing a deck like blue white control or something like that i think you're gonna struggle or to just stub a cantrip there in a heartbeat it looks like these cards are going to be useless which is not good for us i think when it comes to modern if you're not being proactive there's just too much the format's too wide to get you to get you over the hump here over the hump in the beginning i think we're i think we're playing against blue moon 
So it should be an interesting game. We've unfortunately mulliganed. We've basically mulliganed here. I can't get my Death Shadows in play, unfortunately. I can fetch an island and stub whatever my opponent does, but the problem there is that, like, I'm not even going to fetch an island. I'm just going to fetch a shock land. And I think that the fair decks are actually pretty good right now because they seem to have a target on humans. Goblin Electromancer, okay. All right, I'm much more happy about what's going on now. I'm happy that we're not getting Blood Mooned. So they remand this, which is okay. I'm just going to stub this. And then I'm going to untap. Fetch. Just fetch another black source. I don't really have that many red spells in my deck, so I think I'm just going to get a watery grave. And then go double shadow while holding up the dismember. Slash stubborn denial. So, yes, for sure. It's actually like a great thing to let us do here. It just turns on our hand. I think I'm gonna thought scour. I'm not gonna play around ritual into grape shot. Ritual into uh, gifts. My opponent wants to do that. I'd like to see like a discard spell or something. Street Wraith, nice. Hang on. Cycle, if I find a land, cycle Street Wraith, seven, attack, flash and snapcaster, dismember it. They only, they don't play that many remands. So let's see what we draw here. It's kind of risky to do. That's less risky. So now we can just bolt ourselves and have stubborn denial up. Get it? You got anything else, my friend? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think control is not too control's not is not too bad right now because it has such a targeted, such a concentrated target. Uh, I don't know if this is a young pyromancer matchup. I do think it's a stubborn denial disdainful stroke matchup though. Cards I don't really like. I don't like K Command. I don't really like Fatal Push because they tend to board out a lot of their uh, cost reducers. And I like just, so like, I want to be more interactive and let, have less removal and be able to interact better on the stack. Because sometimes they cut, like, I know Caleb Shear cuts all of his, um, all of his dudes in this matchup. All the bears, I guess. I kinda like this. Moving this over here. And trying something like this. These cost. I think this is where I wanna be. I could cut a lightning bolt for a disdainful stroke. But if I leave in these lightning bolts, then I have nine. I have nine turn two answers for a bear on the draw. So I think this is what we're gonna go. We're gonna submit this. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Opponent mulligans, which is always good for the home team. The mold of five G's. I'm gonna hold my street wraith. I 
that's a rough draw. I'm gonna hold my tree wraith for now in case I find a serum visions that I want to card off of immediately. That's just like so brutal to have mold of five and then get discard spelled. We're just taking easy pieces of the puzzle. It sucks that they're going to be all substantiate my Gurmag Angler, but I think that's the only way that they get out of this is that they just pieces their way out. Which means we can be much more patient with our cantrips. We don't. There's no need to like turbo turbo out an angler because it's just going to get. Um, it's just going to get killed or get unsubbed anyways. Oh, so they just scooped it up there. They probably just drew like two lands. I'm gonna grab some water. I'll be right back. make it I made it the sneaky Pete I think they usually play an aggro deck it's pretty good yeah, it's pretty good I'm just gonna play land and pass I don't really want to cycle my street rates on one Seacrum Coast, Sleight of Hand. So playing a Nauseam. I'm going to cycle this now to figure out if I want to stub this or not. I'm usually a pretty fan, pretty big fan of stubbing all these. I think I'm going to. Now Sleight of Hand is just like too poor. I think it's just small ball. After sideboard, I'll definitely snap off sleight of hands in this matchup. Because I really like being um, aggressive with cantrips when I have four stubborn denials in my deck. Okay, we don't need any more lands. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so now we can play the big fish and have up a counter spell. I'm trying to get more blue black. I think I'm just gonna hold. No, there's nothing my opponent can do on turn two that is gonna scare me, I think. If they're playing a nauseam, so I'm just gonna cast the serum visions. I want both of these. I just want more copies of stubborn denial. Okay. So I find the biggest, the most difficult part about understanding how to play against this deck. So I'm going to play my Serum Visions first before combat or before I fetch because I want the Snapcaster Mage. I don't think I want either of these. And then I'll play this Tarn. So I basically have the next two turns for them covered, which means that they're, they're probably they probably just can't win. God, my moto has been so laggy tonight. I've even restarted it like a couple times here. Like when I was getting ready to start tonight. I want things like discard spells.
We're going to count because that gets them mana, which they need to win. I'm going to get this tapped. There's no sense dying to some weird, like, lightning storm out of nowhere. I can't play that angler and have step, snap stub up. So we're just gonna we're just gonna hold off. I don't think I'm gonna go for it unless my opponent taps out either, because they can just like Angel's Grace, and then untap and play land, Simeon Spirit Guide, and get me. Well, I guess. Let me think. I guess I can go. Yeah, I'm definitely just going to go for it. Got it. Okay. So I don't like any of my removal. Any of these fatal pushes, lightning bolts, dismember. I want the K command and the counter spells. Oh, no, I want to leave in my K command. I want to get rid of these dismembers. I have two more cards that I can bring in. I can bring in Ceremonious Rejection. It hits eight, hits eight of their cards after sideboard. Eight artifacts. It's also not. It's also not unreasonable for them to play something like Engineered Explosives in their sideboard, even though I don't know if that's a very common thing. Alternatively, I could just play Young Pyromancer, as it's something that I can do on turn, um, on turn two to just get on the board, which I kind of like. I think I'm gonna bring in the Pyromancers. I don't think they're great, but I think they're better than Ceremonious Rejections. So. Plus, like, Young Pyromancer is just a nice little threat that can help, you know, against their, like, if they have a ley line draw, it's just another something I can get on the board. This hand's pretty soft to a ley line, but I'm going to keep it. Yeah, that's going to get in there. I'm going to cycle at least one of these. Now I'm going to fetch. I'm going to hold this Street Wraith, I think. Well. What am I going to do next turn? If I draw something like a Serum Visions, I'm just going to cast Serum Visions and then cast Death Shadow. I'm going to hold this for like one more turn. I don't think there's much I can get gain from it. And if I can somehow, like, on my turn three, if I can save this for a Serum Vision turn, then I think that's that's good for the home team. Okay, so they play the Spoils of the Vault version. So what do they do with this? They put one card on the bottom, put one card on top. All right, I'm just going to take this Angel's Grace. The Spoils can help dig them to where they need to be. But so they just play that. Okay, that's a pretty good draw. So it's gonna give me a blood crypt. I'm gonna thought seize my opponent.
I will take the spoils. Play this Death Shadow. I'm gonna hold my Street Wraith. I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna do it next turn. I'm not missing out on the damage. So they drew Gemstone Mind. Yeah, see, this is why we did it. Oh. Put on top. Put on the bottom. So let's think here. Five. So I can't kill my opponent this turn. What I can do is make their ad nauseum pretty bad. Because how do I lose? I guess I lose by them because they need five mana. I lose if I cycle this, go to make this five, hit them to ten. If they draw, yeah, I don't see how I lose. But I do think I'm just going to like... I do think that I'm just going to fetch shock because even this puts me to oh, that was a wrong land. I'm just going to battle rage over my opponent here. And the only reason I'm doing this is to make it so like if they do something weird where they have to end up going for it with the ad nauseum without an angel's grace or or a whatever it is in play that it just becomes worse i'm going to regret that if they have like so that, i think this means that they drew an angel's grace Nope, they just didn't draw anything. Okay. All right, playing for the 4 1. I just want to say thank you all for showing up tonight. I appreciate you guys for being here. Um, if you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button. It's just the best way to like grow the stream. And you know, I appreciate you guys doing that. Um, if you guys want to support me more, hit my YouTube channel, go over to YouTube and subscribe there. All of my videos for what I stream is put on YouTube. I have modern legacy and standard content on there. Um, you guys should check out Card Hoarder. They're the best spot chain in the business. They sponsor the stream and I'm a part of the Card Hoarder network. They just, they're between their podcast and the team, they're just great. And you should check out Gamer Craze, which is a store that I learned to play Magic. They also sponsor me. You can look down, there, down in the, uh, the description for their Crystal Commerce. So I appreciate y'all being here. The best way to support me is to just go over to my YouTube channel and then subscribe to it. Doesn't cost you anything. Like I get Magic's expensive. You know. Just go over and do the free stuff. Because the free stuff helps as well. So what do we got here? I've got, this is a pretty poor hand. I have double serum visions to smooth it out, so I think I'm gonna keep it. I, I don't know if I can keep hands like this playing Death Shadow, playing Grixis Shadow, because I'm not very, I don't play with this card enough very much. And when I did play with this card, I usually played Opt. So I think I'm gonna keep this. My opponent Mulligan, I think this could be wrong. This is more or less just for science. Playing is Tron, okay. So we're gonna have to speed this up here. Snapcaster Mage is not very fast. Watery Graves. So we're looking for Death Shadows. There's Death Shadow and a Thoughtseize. Okay, so we're not going to need the second that Snapcaster Mage. We are going to want this Death Shadow, though. So now we can get our Shadow into play on two, which is going to be really important here. I'm also getting close to a 1,000 followers, which is... Pretty nice. Maybe it'll apply for a couple more, a couple more subscriptions. There, so I can stream more decks. 
I'd like to stream some Mox Opal decks, but without owning the Mox Opals, it's pretty expensive to do that. I guess what I could, something I could do is I could just like have certain staples and then do everything else. You know, if I buy, I have Snapcasters and I have some lands. Like if I just have the lands and like Mox Opals and like Chalices, I probably could stream any deck. Now we're back on it there. I'm not playing looting there, Russell Wilson. That's rough. I just like, I can't win consistently with anything else, Noah. That just kills me. Sanctum of Ugin. So they have Tron rolled up. So let's check out what you got here. Oh wow, they just have nothing. All right, well, here's to getting a little lucky. So this is gonna have to go get me Watery Grave. And get this guy in play. Oh, did they rip? They're killing me. Nice. Nice. Versus power plant. Okay, so I know there are three cards. So I guess I kind of just have to play the Skirmag Angler in order to have like a shot. So let's. I'm just gonna see our visions first. I might hit a lightning bolt. Death Shadow plus Battle Rage is a good way to win this game. I'm gonna hold this stubborn denial up. It might change the way my opponent plays. And I'm pretty all in on this. Um, and I'm really hoping they go down with this Karn on this. If they go up, then I'll probably get rid of my Blood Crypt. If my opponent goes towards me, I'm not going to fetch. I'm not going to search because I don't want the top of my deck messed up. That's kind of interesting. Okay. So how we get away with this is I'm just gonna attack the Karn and I think I'm gonna battle rage it. We have Snapcaster in our, in our uh, we have Snapcaster to snap back to battle rage. So I want to threaten to get this Karn off the table. And my opponent's not going to like, they're just gonna let it die. But it means that I can hold this Death Shadow and just start attacking my opponent. My opponent has just two lands in hand. So they aren't doing anything. And who knows, my opponent might just like lose their mind and crack this, crack this O Stone right now. It's interesting for my opponent. I think, I think you have to wait. I don't think like with you're playing off the top. My opponent's deck is really redundant, but you have the mana, and it's not like I can kill you next turn. I think it's a good play for my opponent. 
Sanctum. Oh, Jesus. My opponent literally went runner, runner. Oh, that's frustrating. Oh, that's tough. All right, well, let's sideboard. Tin Man, thank you very much. Appreciate the follow. So all these come in, and this comes in. Dismembers come out. Fatal push. Fatal pushes come out. I think one Snapcaster comes out, one Angler. Because they're going to have four Relics after sideboard. Yeah, we're going to go like this. We're going to keep our Lightning Bolts in to fight Karns. To fight Karn and Thrag Tusks. So. Look at that. We got our first fall of the night, Tin Man. Oh, two T Wu height also. I missed that one. I keep my volume off on my computer because it messes up. It sounds weird on the YouTube. Not into the legendary border. I think it looks cool. I might play another league after this. I don't have to work early tomorrow morning. Hey, T-Woo. The hype. I hope you're having a good... Good day. I hope everyone had a good day there. Memorial Day. Uh, we gotta keep this. Sand's pretty. Sand's pretty good. I would like a little bit more. Like if I draw fetch land off the top, sand's insane. Really hope there's a fetch land on top. I think I'm getting blood. I think I'm getting watery grave with my first land. I find it very, most times, pretty incorrect to not get Watery Grave to start off. Even if you have a hand, like, even if it cuts you off of red mana because you don't have a lot. We've been playing a click and a deprive. I can buy click. Click's cool. Regular Tron, Goffman. The click sounds cool. If I play a little match after the league after this, I'm going to have to take my puppy out though. So I'll be like, I don't know, probably be like a five ten minute break. Okay. So I think this is a pretty easy map, and just hope they don't have Tron rolled up here. They only have one cantrip, which is nice. And then we just gotta pray for a fetch on the top. Really dangerous. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's a good hand. I would like a fetch line. Fetch line off the top. You make this the nut. Urza's tower into chromatic star. Okay. All right, now we're in business. Now we are cooking. So maybe it's. I think I'm gonna get Blood Crypt. Get my Shadow in play. As long as I can find like one or two, a little bit more ways to deal damage to myself, I should be in good shape. missed I want a street wraith into a fetch land please 
all I want. I take a cantrip or discard spell. Any way deal damage to myself would be good. What's my opponent thinking about here? Street Wraith, okay. Step one, all right. I need to be able to do a little bit more damage to myself though because like while I have the first Oblivion Stone covered, I don't have the second Oblivion Stone covered. Yeah, dude. It's not even, you can't even play that in draft. How have you been, Nilla? What'd you do over this uh, long weekend there, sir? You didn't come down for the GP, which was fun. Even though we got worked at the GP, we made, we made my, my deck was too strong, and I took away from my teammate's deck, I think. My two teammates are better limited than I am, and they like compensated by giving me a deck that was very good. I think I went six and two, Urza's Tower. Okay, so we're just gonna stub this. We're gonna use our stubs while they aren't turned on. So they have they still have mine mine tower in hand. There's a really this is like the really weird part of Death Shadow where like there is actually like not really a bad draw in the deck. Because like you're drawing a land or you're drawing like I guess basic swamp is a bad draw. Yeah, because like then all that does is just deal you more damage, which increases your clock. I guess my opponent hits a Tron piece, they can Ugin me. Or not Ugin me, they can uh, Ulamog me if they hit the last one. Which I assume is why they played this instead of the lands that I knew about. I knew one of these lands is gone. So I'm gonna assume that my opponents, I know three out of the six cards in my opponent's hand. I'd say one of them is definitely an Ulamog. opponent is definitely not playing at a brisk pace. Though I don't know exactly how hard Tron is. I can assume that Tron has like some difficult sequencing. And considering the whole deck's cantrips, you have to figure out how to like leverage your mana the best. But Okay, so there's the mine. So I think I'm just going to stub this one. What am I worried about? I guess I still have like even something weird like in, we still have ensnaring bridge beat. I can do this now to look for battle rage. I'm actually going to play this and and get the damage in because there could be some way reason and some weird something weird could happen like my opponent could go like land make black mana fatal push me or use with a with an egg okay so here comes the umog yep okay now we're in trouble but at least we have, we have a lot of outs that kill my opponent. Like we've got two more lightning bolts in the deck and we have three snapcaster mages and we have two Kologon's commands. That's not one of them. I'm gonna play it though, so if my opponent Ulamogs me again, I can find another red source. All right, 
we're going to ceremonious rejection this. My phone still has an O-stone in their hand. All right. Playing Drago. Now nope. yeah, I'm just going to leave this here. All right, we're gonna put Death Shadow on top. We're also gonna put Snapcaster Mage on top. The Loom Log actually wouldn't be that bad. We've, no, we just let it go. We have this other fetch land. I'm just gonna do this in my opponent's upkeep. I don't think there's any, I don't think it matters. Yeah. Okay, so game three. Snap end of turn. You don't have the end of your opponent's turn. Is that when you'd have done that? I guess the only thing, like they're not bringing in surgical. Yeah, I think we're just gonna keep it how it is. Run it back. Is there a specific reason to do it at the end of the turn? Uh, yeah, I don't think I can keep this. Yeah, we're gonna keep this. Land on top? Nope. We need, need another land. Because if I have another fetch land, I can play that shadow on, on uh, two. All right. I'm still gonna fetch a watery grave because I'm, I need to make sure that I can cast my cantrips if I draw them. This likely means my opponent's got Tron here all rolled up. Oh, geez. They didn't stirrings on one. Huh. They have a dismember too. So I'm going to take a Sylvan Scrying. I can either take the Sylvan, because they're so good at getting Tron that I could just take the payoff. No, I think I'm just going to take the Sylvan Scrying. I would like to be able to set up some sort of way here where I can play a Death Shadow and then be able to like bolt myself to get it out of Dismember range. Yeah, I think I mean, we immediately got like punished with here with it doing this, but Relic, okay. Relic's gonna make things a little harder to get this Ugin da or this uh, nasty Germasty down. So I know my opponent's cards. They're just cycling this? No, they're playing a snow covered forest. They just floated a mana, okay. That's not a bad draw, because it gets the dismember out of their hand. There's this tower, so that's the, the right Tron piece. Now, if we draw a fetch land, we're gonna win, because I'm just gonna bolt myself. You have to pop this eventually. Okay, so they drew the power plant. Uh. We get steam vents. I have enough black mana. Okay. 
So my opponent's got Urza's Tower, Wormcoil Engine, Ugin in their hand. Yeah, they just cycle here. They're looking for it. I'm just going to puke if they hit the land here. Okay, they didn't. Oh, shoot. So I'm going to bolt myself. Expedition maps. They're going to be able to Ugin me next turn. If I draw a fetch land, I got him. Yeah. All right. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 20, not two. All right. 